I feel so much more manly <laughs> having Cena on my arm. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cena Fights Fights Breakdown. I'm Chad Vasquez, and with my brother from a Chinese mother, Mr. Logan Lowe. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us today. We have a special episode. Logan and I, we are in our hearts and souls, we are true geeks. That's and true. we are doing our first Marvel movie fight scene breakdown. And actually, one of my favorite top five Marvel films, Captain America, Winter Soldier. Logan, what fight scene are we doing today? We're actually doing the return of Bucky, also known as the Winter Soldier. I'm very excited. We don't need to do that. Too. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's he's too excited. Right. Yeah, all right. He's too excited. Carry on, I'm sorry, go on. Captain America does not realize he's fighting his old dear friend Bucky. That's what yeah. we're about to see. Spoiler alert. But if you are, have not caught up, then you're not about that life, then you know, then, then no apologies, okay? So I hope you guys enjoy, and let's do this. Let's yep, go. Let's do it. Awesome arm. All right, nice push kick there. Shields and, and guns. <laughs> Forward roll. All right, it's just a gun battle, right? It's just covering. Right. The shield. Kick, kick, kick there. All right, that's okay. So let's pause it real quick. That's a Superman punch. It's already catch, but that's a Superman punch. Cap America is using the shield immediately. Why? Guns are involved. Dude's getting shot at, right? So he's rolling, he's covering. So now there's a point where he kicks the gun out of Winter Soldier's hand and then has to charge him. So this action helps him go in with covering distance and leap into him. So with the shield, he moves in, hits him with his punch. Captain America throws Superman punch and falls with a hook. I believe that this shield is creating an illusion of how close Captain America is to Winter Soldier and hitting him. Because if you look at it, Captain America is, is fighting with his hands, but with a tool here, right? He's punching, and that's one range. This, this weapon, this tool, has its own measurement. And now, he falls with another tool that has a different range. So now, from here, this combination is creating the illusion of distance. However, Winter Soldier catches on, and so with this hook, he actually catches the shield right. with the tame arm and goes to a disarmament. So let's talk about that. He comes in with, I guess, a, a hook of yeah. some sort. Like so this. he catches it with his titanium arm. And notice that every time someone uses a tool, it creates an opportunity for the defender. Why? Because it changes, as Chad said, distance. What does that mean? It changes leverage points. So right now, Chad's arm is essentially longer now because it's a longer lever, the fulcrum being his elbow. So note that whereas before I could actually do a throw or a capture with Chad, I can now do it more easily because of the longer lever. With just one hand, assuming that I'm super powered on this, he could power it yeah. and twist it away from him. And now, the Winter Soldier now has. And actually, you know, to add on to that, there's a case where we see Steve Rogers, he has to flip because of what you mentioned, the grip that he gets on the shield and he uses it to spin him over Absolutely. and takes the shield away. How would a shield mm -hmm. be used in combat, whether hand to hand or with weapon? What do you think? He obviously uses defensively, uses it offensively when he mm -hmm. throws it. Yeah. Chad, if you actually threw a left punch with me at, with that. With the shield? Yeah. Okay. So you can actually see. He can throw this punch and it's the edge that's going to be hitting me. So this becomes essentially an edged weapon. It's sharp enough that it can embed itself in metal. Okay, especially when thrown with the amount of force that Captain America as a super powered human being can generate. So again, if you throw that punch, just like you would normally, yeah. if you threw it here, bam, what are we talking about? We're talking about an edged weapon. Why? Massive amount of force put through a very, very small edge, makes this into an edged weapon. That's strong enough to really cause some massive damage to someone as an offensive weapon, the way it's designed. The other thing is, is that whenever you're talking about weapons, you have to talk about resilience and hardness. So resilience, this is made out of vibranium, so you know what a strong, durable metal that is. That's gonna take a lot of punishment. So he could repeatedly punch and use it. You can also use it if you were gonna use it as a backhand. So let's say that I've managed to flank you somehow. I'm in tremendous amount of danger with a backhand because of the amount of force that he can generate with the twisting of his waist. That torque combined with the resilience, hardness, and narrow edge makes this into a very dangerous offensive weapon as well. Roll, roll twirl there. Sorry, a, lot of, a lot of just big swinging motion, I mean, but they have super strength, so I guess that's all right. 
throws it like a boss, right? Yep, misses Oops. it. Little twirl, little knife twirl. All right, cool. That was unnecessary. I just wanted to take this time and talk a little bit about the weapon of choice for the Winter Soldier, which is the Gerber Mark II. It's based on the old Fairburn Sykes knife from World War II. You can see it's, it's a beautiful knife. It's very elegant, very well balanced, and its ability to be maneuvered is really unparalleled. It is good for limited slashing. It's mainly meant to be a thrusting weapon for insertion into certain parts of the body. It's just a perfect knife for combat. It makes sense that the Winter Soldier would have such a knife that he would use. This is in fact so dangerous that we're actually obviously going to be using our trainer knife instead because Chad doesn't want me to wave this around in his face. I don't know why, I'm a professional. But you will note that he starts with an ice pick grip, he throws it and ends up with an ice pick grip in his right hand. So that was kind of useless. But to touch upon what Chad said, you had said about distance, you want to create an illusion. So let's say that we're fighting the whole time like this. Yep. You think that the distance is here. Yeah. And then I distract you by throwing a cross. Now, as I throw my left cross, I want you, the audience, to watch my right hand. So I'm throwing the right cross. I throw the right cross. I pin this against my body. I do a switch. And now I follow up with an unexpected reach. Hmm. Note how I can penetrate much deeper. By this twist, he's not expecting that additional reach. I'll do it again from the other side. I'm harassing, I'm throwing punches, I'm harassing, and then I throw this punch. I pin this against my body, I do a switch. He's now not ready for this thrust. You'll note again, the distance has changed. I know the distance has changed, but he doesn't know the distance has changed. So why would someone change a knife grip in the middle of a fight, that is the main reason why, because of what Chad said about the illusion of distance, because we want to mess with our opponent's concept of the distance between the two of us. The switch that happened in this particular scene didn't make a lot of sense in this reality. There was no need for it except to show off. And you know, even that, that does have some real world use, right? So if I see you and I see that you immediately start a stance, yeah. I'm like, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. All right, yeah. you know what? Sorry I insulted you. Sorry I stepped on your foot. I'm out. So definitely showing someone that you know what you're doing, that has benefit. At this point in the film, I, I don't know if the Winter Soldier really wanted Captain America to see that he knew what he was doing, but maybe he did. Maybe that's why he did that, that type of um, very flashy, very showy uh, knife grip exchange. Or, or it could just be a Hollywood choice because let's be honest, it looks really cool. It's just big old haymaker. Spinning, right. spinning back kick. Oh, I want to see you do that. Charges, I think it's like a flying knee. Oh yeah, okay. The flying knee. It may seem flashy and may be unrealistic, but you do see it often in mixed martial arts. So what's happening here? He uses it again to cover distance very quickly while threatening Winter Soldier. If the opponent tries to go for a takedown, they are eating that knee, it, it happens like that. If there isn't a knockout, usually what happens is there'll be a hit and the guy is so close on to the opponent that from there, he can initiate the grappling, which is pretty cool, right? So from here, as we're battling, I wanna close the distance very quickly, right? But with a legit threat. So the flying knee can help me do that. Now, if I don't knock out my partner, Please I, don't. Yeah, we're gonna do this real easy. As I move in, right, and I come in, if it fails, I can go to a level change, go for a shot, or clinch up. In this context with this fight scene, Kevin America does it, but he misses a shot, he goes right through a, a van, mm -hmm. and they go into their, continuing their melee exchange with, with these wide, wild punches. Ooh, nice. Ooh, another one of those girl. choke. Another I'll do a choke, choke slam, no, just push them, all right, to win my wrestling moment. Is that valid? I, I mean, okay, look, in, in real life, very unlikely. Right, but in this context, Winter Soldier has a titanium arm. Right, right. So it's definitely way above uh, your average human. Right, but Captain level. America is like you know he held a he held a helicopter once. You know, so he's for sure. He, he looked look great doing it. Right, so his right. muscles. Right, but uh, with with Focus. that with that being said, hey, they're both guys with superhuman strength. Right, and I'm sure there's just a ton of force in that throw. So I'm I can see why okay. Steve Rogers is not being able to move as freely as anyone else would do it. Within the context of the universe that we're seeing this fight take place in, I, I get it, there's super strength involved, there's a titanium uh, robotic arm, and I can imagine 
how much force that would apply in it working if we accept that as a reality. In real life, I can only see something like that being used if we're pinning someone to some object. The floor probably make more sense, probably right. from mount. Right. right, I'm mounting you, I'm then holding you by your neck, and then I'm punching. Okay, that makes more sense because you're sitting on the guy. The guy can't move that much. If we're talking about just holding a guy like that, and, and we're kind of canceling the uh, super strength robotic arm thing, there's nothing holding me still here. If there's nothing to pin me on, right? What stops me from just moving out, right? Just simply moving it and then punching back. That doesn't make sense to me. I think that's just Hollywood taking the context of there being a titanium arm, right? right? With that, it makes sense, I would, I would guess, right? Something so strong that it's like about to rip your throat out. Right. Where, okay, you have to hold it still and control it because it's that strong. Fine, I'll give you that. But in real life, guys, I don't think that makes any sense. Boom. Oh, someone did not like that man. All right, so that's a, that's a suplex, that's, that's wrestling. It may seem flashy, but it is, it is actually legit. You, you do see in this combat sport of wrestling, and of course, mixed martial arts. You see would, fighters would do it. Would this be valid in a street fight? I mean, this is, uh, it's a street fight between two super yeah. powerful people, but it's a street Here's fight. Here's the thing with suplex. They do require a certain level of athletic ability, right. for sure. But with that said, if you can do it and you know how to time it when someone is off balance and they're going in a certain direction, I would work in a combat sport context or a full on fight. And, and that's a fight ender, I would say. Yeah, but in this case, so these guys have superhuman strength. So right. of course, you know, their tolerance for pain is just much higher than, sure. than you and me. So, right. but you anyway, actually, we can break it down a little bit. Oh, let's not. You'll be right. Well, we'll go over some of the mechanics. Let's break it down. So there's a body lock on the hips here, all right? And that's essential, because now I can really control a sense of gravity. And now from here, as I step in, I could step between the legs here, I'm already looking in this direction. That's the direction where I'll throw my opponent. And now notice how, as I level change, my hips come up to pick my opponent up. So I'm, all I'm gonna do is just lift up Logan and put it back down, that's it. So from here, and that'll be followed with a very big arch, and I'll launch my opponent right over my shoulders. Bam, he has his shield back. That was an interesting switch. He jams the arm. Okay, nice little uppercut with the shield. Right. Hope he has a warranty on that. Oh, mm. That's when you need an extended warranty. Absolutely. Oh, it's Bucky. Stumble. Look, did you know that? Yeah, look at that. I can recognize that, that jawline anywhere. Right. It's a Greek god. Oh, Jesus. He strikes the tricep with enough force that they cause some damage yeah. to it. So my question is, is this an actual lock or is it purely in this regard an impact strike? This is not a lock, correct? And we had this talk before where, right. where you'll see in martial arts these scenarios where guys kind of hold the arm with a standing opponent. The, the thing is that always, that always bothers me about that is what's stopping me from circling going with it and pulling my arm back out? Here's a very important thing about effective grappling. The relationship in the fight with the environment a wall or floor. Then when it comes to these certain joint locks or these holds, okay, it makes sense because the environment denies the opponent from going anywhere. Right. There's nothing here. Now, okay, I know what you guys are saying. Chad, Logan, there are tools involved and there's superhuman strength. Granted, yes, right? I, I, one thing I could probably see that would be valid with that being considered is maybe with that superhuman strength and tool, they mean being pushed out to the floor. But he wasn't pushed But, but he, he doesn't, right? So he just kind of stays stuck there. But uh, this leads Captain America to do a pretty cool release of the tool out of the arm and right. uppercut. So he does this, he releases it. And leads right just to- uppercuts with, as I said earlier, the edged weapon. This is an edged weapon. So we have to go back and we have to remember that in universe, these are both highly trained people. If you think about Superman, I don't know, did Superman go to the YMCA when he was a kid to learn how to box? Maybe he's just Superman. But these two gentlemen, they were trained to fight. So you have to think that the Winter Soldier would immediately start to flank. Knowing that he was caught here, he would immediately, yeah, start at that moment, right start going right away, right? Yeah, and plus also Logan, I have a knife too, right? right. So would it be, be make sense for you to move and I'm locked here, I'm locked here. Oh shoot, and where's my weapon? Where's my both defensive and offensive tool? My defensive and offensive tool is on the outside. He can now quarter and yeah. flank me. Yeah, so yeah. that's certainly not what I want. 
Looks really cool though. I'm looks sure, cool. again, it looks really flashy and- um, Fanboys. Yeah. yeah. We, we enjoy work. But, you know, if we're going to be honest and take it to a, a real world scenario, right. these are things that are real and play a big factor on, on an exchange like that. Right. It's problematic. Winter Soldier. Right. He has a Gerber Mark II knife. Mm -hmm. And so he's battling with Captain America right. with the shield. What are some tactics strategies he can do to win this exchange? Honestly, with a knife, we're talking about essentially hardened steel against vibranium. vibranium. That's going to be hard. For those of you that aren't fully geeks like us, vibranium can absorb any type of impact and regenerate it back out. So let's say that I'm able to apply a tremendous amount of force here. First of all, I'm not penetrating my brain. It's absorbing all of the vibrations that I'm causing, all of this impact. He's not feeling that shake. If you've ever shot a gun before, you know that a lot of people get injured when they pull the trigger and they feel that recoil. One of the benefits of this mythical vibranium is that he should not be feeling any type of impact. In fact, Ed, the more I hit, it just absorbed it so that I'm just expending a lot of energy. That doesn't answer your question though. Your question is how can I effectively do an attack? I could not effectively do an attack initially with my knife. I would think that my knife would be my secondary weapon. So if we're here and we're fighting, my primary weapon would be my titanium arm if I'm the Winter Soldier. Yeah, which so, has happened, right? Right, just, yeah. so I'm trying to penetrate that. Only when he holds it up to defend himself can I see an opening that I can use my secondary weapon. Yeah, it's a like. That would make the most sense for me. I want to distract him with my primary weapon, which is the titanium arm, and then try to do a finishing blow with my secondary weapon. That would probably make the most sense. And in fact, in Kali, that's pretty much how it's done. We have a longer weapon that we call an espada, which is a sword, and a shorter weapon we call the daga, which is the knife or the dagger. So the longer weapon would open up the person so that the shorter weapon can come in for the finishing blow. So that's how I would probably do it if I had two weapons, which he does. Titanium arm and the Gerber Mark II as a follow-up weapon. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah, use that to deal with already the strong shield and then right. start attacking the legs. With exactly. The yeah, okay, I like that. I'm gonna be giving a grade just for the really brief weapons work. Here's the thing, not only is there the Gerber Mark II, there is the titanium arm, which yeah. is also a weapon, and the shield is both an, a defensive tool, but also an offensive weapon. I have to say that just for the knife work, not great. It, it wasn't the best use of the knife. The switching of the hand was very Hollywood, very flashy, wouldn't actually be done in real life. However, the choice of weapon, excellent. This is precisely the type of weapon that I would expect someone like the Winter Soldier to use. And of course, we have Captain America's shield. He used it both defensively and offensively, and in ways that I think are very classic for the character. He uses it as an extension of his arm in a punch, the uppercut. That was really cool as well. Finally, the use of the Winter Soldier's left arm was also very realistic because he used that as his primary weapon with the knife being his secondary. My critique of it is when he used his knife hand as his primary weapon. I don't feel that's realistic. So because of that, I give it all a B minus, just for the weapons part. Chad? So as mentioned before, I'll be grading the hand-to-hand -hand portion of this fight. I like that they brought in these, uh, what seem like flashy, but realistic moves into the striking. The flying knee and the Superman punch. Things that, again, they, they look like they wouldn't work, but they actually do, and you do see it often in mixed martial arts at the highest level. Also, I uh, appreciate the suplex. So I think that was really cool stuff there. What's my negative on the fight scene? I don't really see anything else more than the four things that I mentioned. The rest is just a lot of just big wild punches with superhuman power. So I, I get it. It does take away the score for me though, unfortunately, right? So I would say, given what I like and what I don't like, I think, I think a C plus would be fair for this fight scene. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it and we hope to see you soon. Peace.